So guys, welcome back. This is Val from Gymlight. In this series of videos, I'm going to be showing how to blend dance studio characters, vehicles and props or even scenes with photos. I'm going to be blending that with photos. I'm going to be doing both stills and later on also animations and doing things from very basic and quick and immediate to super extremely advanced. This video is going to be five hours long. I'm just kidding. It's going to be super, super short. And I'm going to divide it into sections and, you know, episodes. So I'm going to be keeping things really casual, uh, quick. And if there's anything that's unclear, let me know in the comment section. Because I want this to be, you know, very, very kind of comprehensive. But at the same time, really quick and fun. So we're starting off with the Genesis 9 character in dance called Lei by Addy. So Addy Lei is one of my favorite characters, uh, really great. She already has some clothing on her, uh, I think it's called the fantasy gown or something like that. And it's already draped and deforce calculated, hair blown and all that. So she's ready for action, right? We don't need to, I don't need to show you how to create a character in dance. For this demo, I'm gonna be using my own sets, which you can find in my own uh, store, dreamlight3dstore.com. And right now we have a special going on, on you know, gazillion different back backgrounds, uh, photo backgrounds and video backgrounds and all that, which are awesome. But, you know, you can always Google your way around, find some free stuff that we can play with, or we can just grab these, these are really awesome. And the price is great too, right? I mean, come on. So. We're gonna start off by going and finding some good backgrounds, photo backgrounds for our scene. And I want them to be like a beach setting. Let's grab this and take a look here. I think that looks pretty awesome. Yeah, let's use this one, right? So, by the way, they are automatic ways in my own store that do that for you, just so you know. But here we are going, you know, all the way from scratch. So first of all, what's important when you are starting to blend your images with jazz is to know the screen ratio, the proportions of your image. Now, all my backgrounds are 69. So if you have 69, you can set it here, general custom and use you know 69 widescreen all right then you're good to go and then you can just set whatever width or height you want and the other one will follow if you have constraint proportions on right so an important aspect of this is to use the environment tab up here not the environment sub tab or section in the render settings, but the environment tab up here. You can find here window panes environment if you don't see it. And then you can just click on backdrop. Make sure it's white because you can add a color. You know, cover that as well. You can add a color to your backgrounds, right? And then you just click here and click on browse. Now I have some of those packs already here and we're gonna be using beach waves and i'm gonna just grab you know i we can do a larger preview just to see how they look i think that is pretty cool with the waves right but i think just gonna go with something more generic like this one here and is there right so the thing is you know we're gonna do two things now one is i'm gonna grab a cup of coffee right Second, what we're gonna do is match the camera and lighting. So camera is pretty simple. It's not as advanced as many people think. You just add a camera to your scene. Oops, we already had a camera. There we go. Uh, you add a camera to your scene and you can go ahead and use wireframe or texture shaded so that you see that uh, ground, the floor, right? And if you don't see that floor, you can always go up here Click there and you show floor. That is that, you know, the grid, so to speak. Not the Tron grid, but you know what I mean. This grid you see here, right? And thing is, you can always go around and, you know, find left click here to orbit the camera, or right click to, you know, uh, 
pan it around and find a good, you know, if you have an edge on your image, you can try to make those lines follow it. Uh, you can also set, and you should set a good focal length that matches what you see here. These are not super wide, so around 70, 80 is pretty good. If you have something really wide, you can go lower here, right? Like a wide angle. If you have something that's zoomed in on your photo, you can zoom in that. We can also right click here to zoom in and out as well. At, I'd say around 80 is pretty good here. So the thing is, uh, camera height pretty important right you need to know your camera height and that's something you have to just know and see and and be kind of aware of if you're looking at the photo and you, you have to kind of decide is this like taking at one centimeter above the ground or in this case the water level or is it a little bit higher up or is it like eye level or even higher than that, right? So you gotta pay attention and have a pretty good eye. You have to have a keen eye, right? So I'd say pretty much around maybe one meter-ish, something like that, right? So I'm gonna enter 100 centimeters. Pretty good. Now, upon checking now in the video hour preview, we see that she looks pretty okay size-wise, right? I mean, if we left click here and put it here, it feels like oh, she's a little bit too large, right? And if we put her here, it's like, okay, she's a little bit too small for that, right? So somewhere in between is a good match here. Now, the thing is, you don't have to follow the grid perfectly, right? You can just left click here and move the camera in and out a little bit move around to whatever you want and have an eye for it. Where does it look good, right? Where does it look good? All right, that's that, that's the camera. Now we're gonna match lighting and this is the most simple way of matching lighting is when you are outdoors and have sunshine. Or if it's, you know, overcast, we're gonna cover overcast in a different video. So um, we have sunshine here, so we're gonna be using the built-in environment for that and if I reload with a particular map here loaded sometimes it does you just go ahead click here and choose none it's outside the screen just click none so that you engage that uh, you know uh, uh, environmental mode right very important in render settings you have to use dome and scene for the environment to be visible if you use scene it's gonna be kind of dark on your character and dome only will also work, but dome and scene is what I recommend because you can then pair that with extra lights, which we're going to be adding next week. Uh, sorry, in the next video. I mean, come on. Coffee didn't kick in and I'm talking uh, crap. <laughs> right. So thing is, now that we have the sun and sky being uh, used here, what we can do is set it to a summer-ish date, something like June is pretty okay. And then you gotta be a little bit of detective here. You gotta look at the image and say, hmm, does it look like it's dark or bright? Bright, right? And from which direction does it come? Look at the stuff, the palm tree, the trees, even the water waves have lighting more on the left side rather than on the right side, which means that Lighting is most likely coming from the left, right? Very good detective work there. It's coming from the left. So we want to rotate it so that it comes from the left and cast a shadow a little bit on the, onto the right side. Now exactly where that shadow goes and how uh, long it should be has to do with the fact where the sun is in your image. Looking at the, you know, uh, photo, we don't see long shadows, so it's pretty, you know, high up in the uh, sky, right? So I'd say maybe going to 1600 shortens that shadow a little bit. And now we can maybe rotate it slightly, so it's more on her. I think that's pretty good, right? It, feel, it feels good. Again, you can't just, you know, know for sure what it is. And if, if you know, sometimes it's better to fake where it should be because it looks better, 
right? We love shadows. That's pretty good, right? Um, all right. So as long as it follows roughly what's going on in the image, you're good to go. Now, there's a few more things I'm gonna cover today before uh, ending today's video. And that is to, uh, one, control how dark the shadow is. If I look at the image, the palm tree specifically and the trees in the background, they have a pretty, almost black shadow, right? And she doesn't. We want to match that to a certain extent. Uh, as we get more advanced later on, we're going to be talking about haze, uh, you know, as things change in the image over distance and so forth. We're not there yet. Uh, so, and I, I just had one cup of coffee, so I'm not going to go there right now. But what we want to do is go for the environmental intensity, I'll lower that to half which will darken the sky and the sun. Now we're gonna go down here and increase the uh, sun disk intensity, which is over here. Sun disk intensity, two. So now we are, because we lowered the overall to half, but increased then the sun to twice we're having the sun at the same intensity, but the sky is darker, hence why the shadows are now a lot darker as well. And it kind of match what's going on in the environment. So as long as you have that in place, you're pretty good now, right? You can also always you know, add more sun if you want to, especially if it's from the side, you can often punch it more intensely, right? Now, here's another thing. Uh, right now it says sun disk scale 24. That is not the default. The default is 4, which casts very harsh shadows. Sometimes you don't want that. You're going to pay attention to what's going on in the, in the photo. Right now we don't see much of them. Uh, they are not present because the, sky, uh, the sun is pretty much high up in the sky, right? But often, you know, photos have a slightly different... Uh, projection of shadow. Oops, sorry about that. Uh, different projection of shadows. So I'm going to increase that back to 24 just to get it to look that soft, right? And by the way, sometimes, you know, softer shadows are uh, on par with what's going on in the sky. Sometimes when the sun goes behind a cloud, uh, or maybe not that thick cloud, but just a, like a shallow cloud, it gets slightly uh, softer but still intense right but slightly softer so maybe that's what's going on here a little bit right and get a soft touch here going on in the end it doesn't really matter what is going on in the real life or how the photo you know is exactly projecting lighting what matters is what you see and whether it looks good or not one final thing before we end our no the the uh, the ground is as of now set to manual and i recommend you have it to manual specifically when you are on a beach setting sand or water or something like that because then you can grab the character and adjust her height say minus one just one centimeter it sinks her right into the sand it doesn't need to be much i mean at 10 it's a little bit too much right oops but at one, it just makes a natural impression that she's standing on something that's soft. Water is soft and sand, uh, and sand is kind of soft by its own, right? So ideally you want to sink your character just a little bit into that. Now, so guys, that's all for today's video. Uh, next video coming tomorrow. I'm going to try and do one video per day. Uh, for as long as we can go, this is going to be, like I said, a huge topic. I'm going to cover everything I know and I have 20 years of experience in that. So it's going to be 57 episodes, I think. No, maybe 7, maybe 10, I don't know. But the thing is, it's going to be a lot of fun. And what we're doing here is not that you want to grab everything and use everything. You, I'm going to explain so many different tricks, so many different ways of playing with this that you're gonna find something that just resonates with you right we're gonna be covering you no know, reflections we're gonna be covering extra lighting 
different blending modes, different type of types of creating the illusion of lighting your characters from the photos. We're gonna be using DAZ only, we're gonna be using Photoshop, we're gonna be diving into animation and using video editing software as well. So it's gonna be a huge topic and we're gonna have a lot of fun. Guys, that's all for now. Thank you so much for watching. Like I said, go ahead and check out the store. These items are $1.99, literally right now, not for long, we are ending the sale just after July 4th, I think July 6th, we're gonna end the sale. So go ahead and grab the school, you know, these amazing looking images that would just make your renders pop. And guys, if you have questions, suggestions, if anything is unclear, or if you want me to zip another cup of coffee before I do the videos, please do so. Please say so, right? Go ahead and mention it. What do you need me to do here? I'm here for you. I want this to be awesome. Thanks so much for watching. Go ahead, check out the store, and I'll see you soon again.